Welcome back. Welcome back. You are listening to Whistle Wednesdays here on AM 1170. The answer. My name is Kyle Whistle, your host with Whistle Realty. Filling in for Jason Hall today. We got the boys of Whistle Realty, Mr. Derek Hurd, Mr. Joe Corbusiero. You guys are rocking. Are you having fun today? Oh, yeah. A lot of fun. Yes, the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the morning. Top of the day to you. <laughs> I love it. Um, so before the break, guys, we were talking. We got the first five reasons why somebody should not sell their home themselves. So I've got five more reasons for you. Joe, when is the peak of activity on a brand new listing when it hits the market? Usually the first three weeks is when you have most of the eyeballs on the listing. So you want to make sure that your home is prepared. Prepared means you have professional photographers done, video staging, and uh, all, everything. The good signage out there. And you want to make sure that you're on top of uh, uh, the list of Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, and other hundred websites. So the, I think the first three weeks are totally crucial. So. Right. And a lot of these people, when they're putting their home on the market themselves, they're not fully ready. They're not prepared. They're shooting photos with an iPhone. Whoa. They don't have any video. They're putting it up on like Craigslist, right. maybe putting it up on Zillow. Um, you know, photos look like crap. They're, they're not able to show it during that time. Just kind of throw it out there. They're not responding to inquiries fast enough. A lot of the stuff we talked about and they're missing what we call the golden time. And those first two to three weeks is that golden time. And if and the other big thing is pricing it right. If you come out of the shoot, you don't price it right. You don't have the home staged. You don't have good quality photographs. You don't spread it across tens of thousands of websites mm-hmm. all across not only the country, but across the world. You're missing out on that golden time. And that's how you end up leaving money on the table. Right. So that's a big one. Number five is don't miss the golden time. That's a huge Actually, one. The trend now on Zillow, I know this is for sale by owner on Zillow, is day one. They just put a, a Google shot. <laughs> the area. Oh, yeah. That's day one to day four or five. Then right. they put another picture of the living room or the views and uh, then no furniture. I mean, <laughs> it's interesting. I've been following that. Yeah, it's definitely it's a crazy thing to watch. Guys, how many pages of paperwork have to get completed to sell a home? Wow. Be- between disclosures and contracts and I mean we're talking title about reports, title reports escrow and instructions. And, Clue report, uh, SPQ, TDS, I mean, you name it. That's hundreds. I was hundreds. Saying. Hundreds. Okay. It's funny. Sometimes I ask me, hey, do you, um, do you have the TDS and SPQ? Like, what? Uh, transfer disclosure statement, seller property questionnaire. Uh, what kind of questionnaire? <laughs> I mean, those right. are the most important disclosures in the transaction. Right. You can be sued. If you don't disclose what you know about the property. Right. So that's a huge one. Is I mean, you guys, there's hundreds and hundreds of pages of paperwork. And half the time people put a for sale by owner up, the person who brings the buyer might be another agent who knows it inside and out and knows how to get the most out of things, like we yeah. kind of mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what all this paperwork is and you don't have somebody on your side to explain it to you to make sure you fully understand it... One, you could leave money on the table, and two, you could open yourself up to a lot of responsibility. And I, th- I think that's a huge one. Yes. All right. Number seven on the list is for sale by owners do not know how to handle home inspection findings. So, Derek, what's a home inspection? Um, well, it's a complete inspection of the home. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's a, a diligent inspection where they go through and look at every aspect of the home and make sure that there's no uh, cracks in the slabs all the way to uh, any type of structural damage, things that need to be repaired, and uh, really go through and create a value for the home. Right. And, you know, the typical home inspection that's done, whether it's a brand new home or a hundred year old home, there's going to be dozens of things that are yeah. going to pull up on there. There's going to be little things like, um, you know, change the filters on the air conditioner, which cost about two dollars to do. But there could be major things, like you mentioned. There could be an issue with the foundation or the roof or the, you know, um, the slab. I mean, there could be so many different oh, things yeah. that could be wrong with the home. And you know, part of the transaction process is getting the inspection done, and then there's usually a request for repairs that's going to come across to the seller. If you don't know how to handle that. I mean, you could leave tons of money oh, on yeah. the table. I mean, that 
the the initial negotiation is a big part of the equation, but there's almost always going to be a renegotiation after that home inspection's done and after that appraisal's done. Right. So if you don't know how to handle that, you could really leave a lot of money on the table. No, long ago I had the, a negotiation that was a what crazy. I actually got fifteen thousand dollar <laughs> reduction from my clients. Fifteen thousand. There was really nothing major wrong with the house. Right. It's because, you know, that's our job. This is what we do all day. Right. It's easy to negotiate when, you, when you're trained for it. So. Right. I mean, that's what we get trained to do all day, every day. Our team at Whistle Realty, we talk about how we were the number one rated team per the Wall Street Journal last year. And you hear a lot of realtors talk about being number one, but they don't talk about what that actually means to you as a client. And what that means is we negotiated more deals in San Diego County as a team than any other team out there. 343 of those last year. And that experience negotiating is something you can't get without actually doing it live. You could read every blog you want, every article on Zillow and Redfin and Truly and all that. You could read all you want about how to negotiate, but until you actually get into negotiation, it's a whole other animal. That's where you need a team who's really experienced in the negotiating. You know, like Joe mentioned, a buyer he represented recently, he was able to negotiate a $15,000 power, yeah. you know, uh, credit for his buyer into a deal. That's big. It's really important yeah. to know how to negotiate that out when it comes to the request for repairs. The next one on the list, the number one website out there, guys, that buyers are searching is? Zillow. And if I go on and punch my address in on Zillow, what's it going to give me? A Zestimate. <laughs> and Zestimate, last time I checked, the average margin of error is 8.5% in San Diego <laughs> County. So if you've got a million-dollar home, a lot that money. means that Zillow could be plus or minus $85,000 off on average of what your home is worth. So that's a Huge really, guy. really big swing in there. And a lot of people that are listing their homes themselves, they're just going on Zillow, looking at what's this estimate and pricing it pretty much in line with that. You've got your crazy sellers who'll be like, ah, Zillow doesn't know anything. I'm pricing it, you know, <laughs> 20% higher. Right. And you've got your other people like, oh, well, if that's what it's worth, maybe I'll price it a little lower. I'll get multiple offers. But why is the Zillow's estimate not accurate, Joe? Well, they're not taking into consideration a lot of things. I mean, the marketplace. How many properties are active? How many are pending? If the house has any views, if there's any improvements, uh, the size of the lot. Sometimes they just crunch in the numbers based on the square footage of the building itself. But it doesn't pencil or doesn't put in consideration if the home has views. I mean, adding views or ocean views or mountain views or you don't have anybody in the back, that can go up to twenty to $25,000. Definitely. I mean, this is so many. And again, like I mentioned earlier, the inventory is low. If It doesn't mean in your zip code and your, you know, in your area it's low. But if you are competing with nobody else, you could probably get a little more money. Right. And Destiny doesn't know that. Right. We do. Because that's all we do all day. <laughs> Yeah, so, so, I mean, if you're basing the price of your home off of Zillow's estimate, I mean, you might as well just throw a freaking dart at a dartboard with a bunch of numbers yeah, on it and price it. I mean, that's what you're doing there. You're, you're really leaving your fate in the hands of Zillow, which is crazy. That's like thinking you've got cancer because you went on WebMD and, and it, you put a couple symptoms in there and it said you've got cancer and, you know, getting crazy radiation and chemo because of that's what WebMD said. Like, that doesn't right. happen. You still, you can do some research online, but you're still going in and you're seeing that doctor and letting that doctor truly diagnose exactly what's wrong with you before they prescribe a course of treatment. Same way with real estate. You could do some research online, but you still need a realtor who can really dig deep and nail down exactly what your home is worth. And that's the value you get working with the team at Whistle Realty. So if you want to learn more about our team, what we can do to help you sell your home and for top dollar and not leave any money on the table. Give us a call. Shoot us a text. 619-663-SELL. 619-663-7355. Derek, Joe, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for listening to Whistle Wednesdays. We'll see you next Wednesday. Can you blow my whistle, baby? Whistle, baby, let me know.